everyone. I'm Steph. I lead developer relations at Nillian, um, and I'm also Oceans404 on Twitter. So this is a deep dive into pets. I have two pets at home, Obi and Teddy, uh, but sadly we're not talking about them today. We're actually going to be talking about privacy-enhancing technologies. And I know there's going to be a lot of acronyms in this talk, so I had to add a SpongeBob meme to make this more fun because if SpongeBob's there, it has to be great, right? So first of all, I, I want to make this easier by telling you, I promise you've already used a pet. These are two that I used in middle school. I used Pig Latin to conceal things from my little sister. When my friends came over, um, we would talk in Pig Latin about boys so that she wouldn't know what we were talking about. I have also used a Caesar cipher when passing notes in class. Um, the Caesar cipher is a privacy enhancing technology where you shift the letters three back or however many back to create secret messages that you can share with your friends. And I'm sure all of you have used these and others as well. But the problem with these and simpler pets is that simple privacy doesn't cut it today. When I asked ChatGPT to decode the hello message that I wrote with the Caesar cipher, it was able to do it in milliseconds. So today we have smarter adversaries, including AI, quantum computing, all different types of things that can way more easily break encryption. And we also have more complex data needs. So we need to be able to keep the data safe while we're using it, which gets more complicated with large sets of data. And also when you have to manage data that you share with your friends and other people in your internet world. And the stakes have never been higher, honestly. When I think about how important privacy is, things start to feel a little bit like a Black Mirror episode, where if things go wrong, it could literally ruin lives as secrets leak, as your personal data gets out. So now is the time to care about privacy more than ever before. So these are some considerations that we have to take when designing modern PETs or pets. The first thing we want to be able to do is use data while protecting it. So even if something is encrypted or protected, we might want to use it to do different things. The second thing we need to do is prove the data is correct um, and authenticated without actually revealing it. So both of these things can be done with pets and math, basically. And I had to throw this meme in because I don't know about you, but when it comes to cryptography, there's so many acronyms. And this is up there to make it a little bit less scary as we dive into each of these different types of pets. So the first one I want to talk about is zero knowledge proofs, ZKP. So the TLDR, or the mitochondria, is the powerhouse of the cell version of ZKP, is that it allows you to prove something without revealing the underlying data. So the classic example is um, if you have your birthday and you know your birthday, you can prove things about your age without revealing your actual birthday. And that's done with provers and verifiers. And the cool thing about ZKP is it's already being used by projects that you know and will likely run into at events all week. So the first one I thought about was ZK Sync, which is an L2 that's using zero knowledge proofs to bundle transactions so that you only have to po post one proof on Ethereum. Um, and that cheapens things and makes things a lot faster. Aztec is using ZKP to create private transactions. So I can send my friend money and they know that I've sent them the right amount. And that could be done for bills or all kinds of things where maybe we don't want to know the exact amount of money that's being sent on the blockchain, but we want to prove that it has actually been sent into the correct account. And then Provado ID, shout out to Evan, who just did an amazing panel. Provado is using ZKP to create attestations to prove any types of things. So you can literally prove things about your birthday, uh, whether you attended this event, literally anything, and their SDK is awesome. So highly recommend checking that out if you're a developer. The next pet I want to talk about is MPC, multi-party computation. So this is when you can distribute computation on data that you can't see, but still work with it. The example that I like to think of for MPC is voting. If all of us cast a private vote, how do I count all the votes and figure out who the election winner is? This is a perfect time to use MPC. Um, so I work at Nillian, and we're using MPC in our pet net today. Uh, and I'll talk more about that later. But MPC is one of the pets that we're most excited about. It is also using MPC to create wallets that have all of the keys distributed so that you can recover them with social login. 
And then base AI agents also use MPC to split up, I believe it's private keys, so that if an AI agent has a split private key, it takes multiple agents in consensus in order for them to do something on chain. So that's how these companies use MPC. The next one is FHE, fully homomorphic encryption. So this is similar to MPC, but instead of having lots of different parties doing things, one party can directly compute on encrypted data. So Zama is really leading the charge in FHE right now. They have awesome research and development and tons of libraries that make this a lot friendlier for developers. Inco uh, does this on chain and Phoenix also has a blockchain that incorporates FHE. And then last but not least is TEEs, which are trusted execution environments. These work by creating completely isolated environments in hardware and then protecting that hardware so that none of the secrets can leak out. So Secret Network has um, TEEs integrated into their network and we actually heard some pretty exciting news this week from Anthropic who are partnering um, to basically use TEEs on AI agents. So that's pretty interesting and it's Cool to see a Web2 company kind of getting into this space. So they're also using TEEs. But when it comes to all of these different pets, there's different limitations and kind of pain points to consider. So with ZKP, it can be really hard to audit and it's limited to just things that you can prove. For MPC, it requires lots of different people to be online at the same time so that we can contribute at shares to the computation. For FHE, the limiting factor is just speed the computation can be really slow. And then for TEEs, since they're hardware dependent, you have to trust the hardware provider, and that's just something that not everyone can depend on. So those are different limitations. So which one should you choose? And maybe the obvious answer is none of them, but also all of them. All of them have reasons to choose them and also reasons that maybe you wouldn't. So as a developer or um, someone who's looking into the PETs, you'll want to look at all of them and decide based on your use case which one works for you. And I mentioned before, I work at Nillion, and at Nillion we're building a pet net uh, and the PetNet combines PETs, all of the ones that I talked to you about before, into one system where you can kind of pick and choose what's best for your use case. So this is really exciting to me as a developer because I'm someone that didn't study cryptography or math, but I love to be able to implement things when I see them. So if I see, is I don't need to know everything about them in order to implement them to my solution if there's something like a pet net which combines everything and lets me pick and choose. So very excited about everything we're building at Nillion and you can learn more about our project uh, by going to our docs, docs.nillion.com. We also have an AI chatbot on the side where you can directly talk to it, ask questions about PETs, um, and it's pretty good. It'll give you answers to anything you want to know, or you can come talk to me afterwards. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that we're doing a pretty cool activation all week at DevCon. Uh, we're giving out free Tuk Tuk rides. So if you see a blue Nillion Tuk Tuk, you can take it completely for free. Just show it where you want to go. So like whatever side event you're going to next, and it'll take you directly there for free. A useful Web3 infra. We're excited about it. But that's everything for me. Thank you. Thank you, Tay.